Good afternoon, everyone. This is Natalie with Cook With Me. This morning, we will be doing shrimp ceviche. This is a part of the menu tasting series that we were doing for the Colorado Springs area. So I just moved to Colorado and I'm creating a new menu for the Colorado Springs um, people. So I'm excited to get to tasting a new menu with you. That's why I call it menu tasting so you can cook along with me and you can taste the items. Tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you want to add, what you don't want to add and give me your input. So that's a part of the menu tasting series so I can get, so we can do it together so I can get your input of your idea. And also you can send me a comment of what else you would like to see on the menu. For right now we're doing appetizers and then we'll move on to entrees and desserts. So every time I have a new menu item, um, I then add it and then I get feedback and I go ahead and adjust it and then I add it to the menu drop down that you can choose from when choosing a cooking glass. All right, so first let's get started with the shrimp. So I have that one. I bought previously, oh, previously frozen peeled devein white shrimp, about 26 to 30, I've got a pound. It's got a pound of shrimp. So I'll put my parchment paper down under my cutting board so get ready to be cooking with shrimp. So I've had it just sitting in the fridge. Um, I got it last night so we can get some fresh shrimp. It's always good to be used to use fresh shrimp. And so these are already um, deveined. Thank goodness. Uh, so I will put them in a strainer and I'll just do a rinse, quick rinse. Um, it never fails that I always find a piece of shell or a piece of tail in the shrimp, no matter if it's cooked shrimp, if it's, you know, from the market or doesn't matter from where. I always find pieces of shells. And the worst thing, this is going to be a somewhat raw serving of shrimp. Like Susie showed, the last thing we want is, see? The last thing we want is to be chewing on some on some shells. Oops, I ripped around too hard. All right, so the, the thing about peeling off the shrimp is you wanna squeeze the bottom to push the shrimp parts out. And then you pinch and pull at the same time so you don't rip the tail as I just did. So you wanna squeeze and pull and then clean off your shrimp find any pieces so we'll do that real quickly and then in the back what I have going on is I have a five quart pan of boiling water um, getting to a way so let me turn it up on high so my husband is allergic to shrimp and so is most of my family so what I will do for a non-traditional ceviche is I will poach the shrimp in some boiling water, just a couple of minutes. Nothing too crazy, just because um, this is fresh shrimp and that's my husband's worst enemy. So if I have, um, if I'm able to cook the shrimp, like saute the shrimp, I can, he can eat that, no problem. But with the raw shrimp, so if you have any allergies to, or slight allergies, because he, he only has slight allergies, so he's not like severely allergic or anything like that, because if not, this wouldn't even be an option. But he's not severely allergic, so if you're not severely allergic and you're just reactionary and just get a, um, an H or something, then you can poach the shrimp just to be sure that you get all the bacteria or whatever you want say is in raw shrimp but the traditional way of cooking ceviche is to soak it in um, lime and citrus so you can soak it in lime orange juice and oranges and you let that sit in the fridge for about an hour to four hours it just depends on the amount of shrimp that you have the freshness of your lime you'll be able to tell if your shrimp is cooked or not by the color so when your shrimp is cooked, even in lime, it will turn a white color.
color, just like when you cook it on the stove, you will see that it'll turn from um, transparent to clear. So I have peeled off all the tails. I need this for my shrimp trash bag. I'm going to rinse. I have it in a colander, so I'm just going to rinse it off real quick. pieces because we are doing a ceviche so it's somewhat of a dip so you don't want big chunks like a cocktail big chunks of ceviche you want to be able to dip it with your tortillas and eat it that way so we're going to be cutting up the shrimp there we go. just in like three pieces I'm cutting them up So I also saw um, somebody that did the Peruvian style um, cooking of the ceviche. And what they do is they salt it. They put a lot of salt with the shrimp and then they put um, ginger, celery. They say celery is a good agent for cooking shrimp with the acid as well as impart flavor. So that's a... If anybody does that, let me know, because I've never heard of it being done that way. So I hear my water coming to a boil, so I'm rushing here. And then this also, so after we poach it really quick, we're going to soak this in the lime. So we're doing two parts cooking, to making sure we get all <laughs> the bacteria or whatever is in the shrimp out make sure that we, I have no allergic reactions at all. So I will poach it a little bit and then I will soak it in tons of lime. As you can see in the ingredients list that I sent over, I asked for over 10 limes or 10 limes. That's only because I can't judge the amount of juice that will come out of the limes that you have. And we need a lot of citrus to be able to cook the ceviche properly. Especially if you're not poaching it and you just wanna do, um, you just wanna do it via soaking it in lime, then you definitely want a lot of lime juice. So, yeah. I'm gonna put that in there. That's gonna slowly put it in. don't want to toss it like I was about to do because you don't want splash of boiling water on you. So immediately as I put it in the boiling water, it turned a color of beautiful pink. I'll show that to me in a couple of seconds. As soon as I'm done cleaning this up, I grab a little ice and it's ready to, it's ready to go. So, wash my hands. Wash my knife. All right. You want to make sure you wash your knife really good because you are um, using fresh raw shrimp. All right, so that should be ready to go. And then I will get a glass bowl. Don't want to steal in a steel bowl. You want a glass bowl and let's fill this up with ice. I'll tell you why in a second. white that's how 
you know the cook the shrimp is to be cooked. out my colander because I'm going to need this bowl back. Rinsing it out with some hot soapy water. <laughs> Not just rinsing it out. You have to remember there was raw shrimp in here. You can also do ceviche with um, white fish any white fish you can use and you can do the same process of cooking it in the in the lime juices pour this out into the colander taking my shrimp out not the ice just the shrimp That's when you know your shrimp is cooked nice and white, not clear. And you can chop it up into smaller pieces as well. Um, but I do like to see the whole shrimp in the dip. But if you like smaller pieces, you can go ahead and chop it up into smaller pieces. You will do that now at this time um, because you don't want to do it when you're poaching it in the water because you're gonna have, you're gonna take forever before you take all that to do the shrimp out. Again. So you know, food safety, food safety, right? Always washing your hand. Okay. Then, we have a, to put a line, it's not really working in here. <laughs> so I'll get a smaller bowl. So I also have this one, this is for, let's try this one. This is for the ones that are really hard that I use, but when they're nice and soft. And I left them, I left my limes out on the counter overnight so that they can be nice and soft and not, if you put them in the fridge, and be hard. You can also push down on them before um, you try to juice them. So let's do this one. Let's try this one. Have a Jeez. Clicking and clacking. I haven't used this one in a long time. All right, yeah, let's go with that. I'm gonna use this one. I also saw somebody use a thong and they put it between here like this and they squeezed. So if you don't have one, you can use that as well. Okay, trash. And I, um, to have a good gauge of how much lime you're gonna use is to make sure that all these shrimp are going to be fully immersed into your limes, into your lime juice, fully, fully immersed. We don't want no uncooked shrimp, especially if you're doing it raw. You want it completely soaked and the lime juice. Right. You see my muscles here, see? Don't need to go to the gym this morning. Right. Just slice them all so we can be ready. See, some of them are smaller, some of them are, and I do wanna leave, let's see, a couple for when we take them out of this juice. Also, this juice we're gonna toss. So you don't want to use all your limes. We're going to toss this juice. We don't want the same juice that was, that was soaking in with the limes, with the shrimps in our ceviche. So I'm going to squeeze all this. We're going to make sure you save some limes so we can have it for 
when we put all the tomatoes, onions, cilantro, you're gonna need some limes for um, the avocado so they don't lose their color. So I should have just said 20 limes to be on the safe bet, right? But um, as much limes as you can. And again, it depends on the size of your limes and how hard they are because, see, especially when you order food online and you know you get your veggies and it's never, ever how you would pick them out of the grocery store, right? Not that I found. So I'm gonna save four limes for my um, dip. Let's call it dip for the ceviche dip. So then we have lime juice with the shrimp. We put a little bit of salt and pepper just to season it. I love this handy dandy salt and pepper. If you see me use it in my classes, this is what it is. It's just salt and pepper. Here is my spoon that I had at home. see all the shrimp touching the line. I need a couple more. See? It's a little bit shallow. So, let's do two more. Should have enough. See, and then this one was extremely tiny. But that was very juicy. So that a lot of juice came out of that one, see? Don't underestimate the small ones. <laughs> small and short like me, right? Don't underestimate our capacity. All right, it's a piece of the tag that was on the line. I like this one too because um, it has the holes in the bottom, so we don't have to worry about the seed. With this one, every time the it would get full with pulp and seeds, in the back in the event this one is lost yeah so good 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 ah, you can see my squeeze face okay now much better mix that up with the lime juice and remember we're going to toss this juice so don't Use all your limes. There we go. We're gonna put this in the fridge, and when we are ready to put out our shrimp in, in the end, then we will take this back out. You can go ahead and add. For some, I don't know why. I love cilantro. I just put cilantro in everything. Even my beans. But you do want to wash your cilantro, be it organic or not. 
it always, always, always has fine dirt from it being pulled directly from the earth. So it will have somewhat, but you will feel it on your cutting board. It's like sandy, that Florida fine sand. So I will put it in a colander and have the water running over it a little bit. Washing it off. That's all I'm doing. Just rinse that off, let it drain. And then let's get working on our avocados. Because we want that to soak in a little bit of lime. The longer they soak, the better they will um, last in color when you're putting it into your salsas. So, beautiful avocados. I got them last night. You just want to make sure when you do get them and you need to use them immediately that you can go ahead and pinch and it'll be soft. Not too soft, not like squishy soft to the touch, but not firm, not too hard, not too soft. Little it'll go in a little bit that's when you know it's ready to be yummed on so i'm going to take my knife i'm going to run lines from top to bottom make sure you feel your knife touching the bottom of the skin and you're going to run your lines vertical that way and then across you're making little cubes and you want, it depends on how, how you like your avocado. If you want big cubes, smaller cubes, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna make a spoon. And we're gonna scoop out the avocado into a bowl and make sure you don't, from the, from the tip out and around, because you don't want to uh, mess up your perfectly square. It's perfectly square that you just cut up. Go. Perfect. And it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. Always remember that. This is your kitchen. This is your fun spot. You will eat it. You will enjoy it. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be delicious. So I will be cutting up some avocados. So again, you can do it from either end, but I like doing it. I found it to be easier to come out that way. And then I scoop around and we don't want that pit this little stem pit don't want that so be careful of that and one more you want to chop down the center and there's a big seed in the middle so you just push your knife down it won't go any further and then you go around that's all you're doing and then you take your knife you separate it's a little bit harder oops but that's okay once we put the lime in there be careful how for the for for far down <laughs> I can't talk this morning. How far down you go because my knife went right through the skin. So you don't want to press too hard. You don't want to press too hard. Here we go. Take that pit. Alright, and go around and under. Look at that. You got some avocado cutting skills now. Alright, and then the pit. You take it, you slam your knife into it. Don't get too crazy. <laughs> You're gonna slam your knife right through or miss. And then you just take the pit off that way. And then again, run your knife vertical. See, this went right through. So be careful because these skins are thin when they're super ripe like this. So you just wanna be careful. Cut into your little squares or you can cut into slices and um, leave one half to put as on the top for um, your decoration all right there we go this one's a lot softer it's okay softer means it's just going to be creamier mm. to your dish and now we're gonna put some lime over this too. Lime, salt, and pepper. And that will make sure that your avocado doesn't get brown in your food. There we go. 
one more for the other half. All around. Perfect. Then salt and pepper. Always salt and pepper. Season, season. And then when you're mixing this, be careful to do it gently. It's like a fold when you're folding your, your egg whites for a whip. Nice and gentle because then you're gonna make, um, then you're gonna make guacamole. I'm lost for words this morning. Then you're gonna make guacamole. We don't want that. We want to see these yummy cubes in your ceviche. A little bit more salt and pepper on the top. All right, and we're going to take this and we're going to set this aside and let this soak. There we go. And then we're going to get our bowl that we're going to be serving our ceviche in. So I have this beautiful wooden bowl that I'll be using. And we're going to start with the tomatoes. So we have the tomatoes. And we're going to dice these. And remember, this is for a dip. So you do want a nice, small, fine dice. Not super fine, but you know what I mean, jelly bean. It is for a dip. You can also, um, you know, when you go to the store, they have, if you want to avoid the 100 pounds of tomatoes that we have to um, slice right now. If you want to, you can take the salsa that you find at your local grocery store that's already that's already um, made. You can take that and then you can use that for your because it's the same base. It's the same base that we're using. Tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and then, you, but you still want to get your fresh limes and fresh citrus. You can use oranges, lemons, if you don't like limes either. That's one thing I love about cooking in the kitchen, in your kitchen, is because it is personalized to what you like. So if you don't like limes, limes are a little bit too acidic for you, use lemons. Use oranges. It's the same. Give you that same citrus acid taste on a lighter note, right? So never forget that your kitchen is not rigid and you don't have to do things the way I do things or the way anybody, you see anybody, anybody else does things. You do it how you like it. And yes, I just poked my hand. So be very careful <laughs> how you're there slicing up your tomatoes. All right. And if anybody has any suggestions and tips and tricks of how to slice tomatoes diced tomatoes. I'm always open to suggestions. My sister, the last time I was slicing a tomato, she said, I can't believe you slice a tomato that way. I was like, yes, I do. And she showed me a different way and I was like, hmm, that's different. I've never seen anybody slice tomatoes that way. So give me your tips and tricks. But this is what I found like, um, like onions to dice the tomatoes. And you leave the ends so that when you're slicing, you don't, they don't completely fall apart. So you just wanna, when you do the slice, not all the way to the very end, like your onions. And I'll show you that in a minute when we start slicing the onions. To take that. How many tomatoes have I used now? Two, three? Three tomatoes. So I just got a bunch of tomatoes because I don't know the size of it. So I just gauge. That's why when I do my ingredients list, I don't put exactly how many um, tomatoes or habanero or onions because some people, you might be making it for a group of 20. You might be making it for just your family. You might be making it just for dinner. So it depends on how much, or if you don't even like onions, my husband's like, don't put so much onions in the salsa so that you don't put that much onions or i love tomatoes so i will put a bunch of tomatoes might even 
Remember how I always sneak in my kale and my shrimp? Um, my shrimp. I'm thinking about shrimp. My my kale and my um, spinach. I might. You can even sneak that in here too, which I'll probably do. I always, whenever I cut cilantro, I always sneak in um, kale and spinach into whatever it is I'm making. Yesterday I made a coleslaw, and I had the you know how they sell the um, box of power greens? So I took the box of power greens and I just got a whole bunch out and used that in my coleslaw as well. And I cut it really fine. You want to cut that really fine, especially when you have your kids or people that are finicky to um, strong greens like that because they had char, they had kale and spinach. So when you have those and arugula, Arugula is my enemy. I don't like arugula. I cannot seem to come to like arugula. I don't know. It has that strong, bittery taste. All right, I think that's good. It's almost filling up the bowl. If anything, we can always add more. We can always add more. So we'll clean off. That's why I like setting up also your cutting board right next to your sink. This is my sink right here. So that you can just clean it off and move on to the next thing. You don't have to take it over to the trash and all that. And then I use the other side of my sink for the trash bag. All right, so we take that. Oh, I just cut my ends off. That's what I just noticed, but it's okay. We'll do it this way. We'll do it that way, yes. All right, so you wanna keep one end of your onion. Is this is, as you can see, the root of it, the stem of it, and this is what's gonna hold, just like my tomatoes that I did, this is what's gonna hold your onions together when you're chopping. Because you don't want your onions to be flying apart. And you want this to be cut your onions swiftly because you're gonna start crying. I don't know, I've met several chefs that have been immune to onions and I've cut plenty of onions in my life and I have yet to be immune to the um, chemicals of the onion. Have yet. Can't wait for that day to come. And I don't have to be crying because of the onions. All right. Again, see, cleaning off my, cleaning off your knife from all the skin. Now, the onions have lines for a reason. <laughs> Not maybe the reason God intended was to. Um, for different reasons, but I use it as my guide to um, slice my onions. You want to go all the way down. And then one of my instructors said, you know how I got my job? I got my job by walking into the interview and they asked me to demo something. And you know what I demoed? How to slice an onion properly. Is everybody's just, he says, we use the lines as guides, and boom, he got the job. Am I crazy? Oh, okay. So you wanna put your hands firmly down, and then you're gonna slice backwards. You wanna go all the way to the end. Just a little bit, hold it together. There we go. slice down and that will give you your perfectly diced tomato and I'm only going to do not too much yeah only the whole half and my eyes are already starting to glow it could be this one here too so I'll move this away from me too put it outside Take this to cut it even finer because I don't like chunks. I like really, I don't want to taste me biting down into an onion. Um, I also heard that what they do 
is they do the same thing with the uh, with the lime, with the sorry, with the shrimp that you poach it in hot water. People do that with their onions, so that when they eat raw onions like this, um, and poaching is just you just put it in boiling water for a couple minutes, and then you would take it out. Nice, and then you would take it out. All right, see, perfectly fine, diced, easy peasy. Put your onions in, beautiful purple color. And I'm going to need to wipe my eyes so that I can see what I'm doing, so I don't chop my fingers off. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, I will to the side. Wipe my eyes, and then um. Clean my rag. Ah, oh, got some onions in my face. Where's my face? Did my face turn purple? From the stain, look at this, wait, is it this one? This one, that I have purple stains on my hand. That's funny. All right, clean off my cutting board. Wipe off my knife. Let me go grab a napkin. Because my eyes, are still runny. This onion made me cry. All right, next. Um, let's start soaking this in lime too, so we can be nice, soak, and delicious by the time we get to the rest of the ingredients that has had imparted some flavor. So we'll be ready, Freddie, when we're ready. And we don't have to wait for it to soak. So we're gonna squeeze some limes on the top. There we go. Out. So we feel nice, we impart our flavor. Oh, what I was saying is um, that I don't soak the shrimp in the stainless steel bowls to soak them in the fridge, and especially if you're doing it raw and you have um, the raw shrimp. If you're doing it raw like that and you're soaking it for one to four hours. It depends, again, it depends. You wanna see that white color with the shrimp. Sorry, my eyes are still going. You wanna see that white color with the shrimp so it, you would keep an eye on after an hour to see if your shrimp has changed color that way. And because you're letting it soak for so long, um, the stainless steel will actually impart a metallic taste into your shrimp. So you don't wanna soak your shrimp or seafood in a metallic bowl. Glass bowl, plastic bowl, um, whatever it is that you have in your kitchen. You don't wanna use that metal. All right, so I use all my limes. You know what? I also have some oranges and lemon. have some leftover oranges and lemon. So I will use that too. Whatever citrus you have in the home. And this is not even like, you know, an orange, it's a mandarin that the kids use for school. The cuties that the kids use for school. It still has citrus. So it doesn't need to be an orange per se. It still imparts that acid citrus taste and I'll put a lemon too. We get all kinds of citrus in this today. Let me toss these aside. These are starting to accumulate. There we go. Clear off our work area right as we go. Clean as you go. There we go. That's all my citrus. Then I will put some salt and pepper and get these tomatoes and onions soaking in this delicious flavor with all that different citrus. Some salt and pepper there. So look at all that citrusy goodness in there. There we go. Let's get that soaking. All right. Next, we want to do is make sure we have 
all the stuff cut up that we want because we have the habanero next. So you don't need to put habanero in your um, in your ceviche, but we like spice in this house. So you can add jalapeno, you can add any Thai chilies or chilies, or um, handy dandy Mari Sharp pepper. I will add this in it too. This is a Belize owned company and she actually has the factory in where I grew up, in the part of town where I grew up. So this is, this is home. So I will, it's on Amazon. It's called Marie, Marie Sharp's Habanero Pepper Sauce. I use hot and it says proud product of Belize. There's another um, pepper out there that's called Marie, Maria's or something. It's not the same thing. This is from Belize. So you can put this in there too. And they have all kinds of pepper. They have jams, all sorts of stuff. Okay, anyway, moving off topic. So we are going back to the habanero. I will cut this way down so that I can get, and remember the last time I said with the habanero, the closer you are to the stem, the darker it is in color. The hotter it is closer to the stem. The further away it is, the less, so the longer the pepper, the less hot heat when you bite into it. So you can just use the end if you like, but I will cut mine into big, big chunks. I just want to impart the flavor and the heat of the habanero. I do not want to bite into that habanero. At no point will that be fun for me. So I will go around and I will cut. I like these plastic bags because I use them as my shield and you want to stay away from the seeds. Seeds is a big no-no. So let me see. I think that's all. I don't think I will put that much, but no, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make it spicy today. So we will take the ends and the stem until we get just the root of it. Let's see, the root of it in my paper. And I'll toss this in the trash. And then we will take these, put them in our salsa, our ceviche base, not salsa. And we're going to put that in with the lime the orange, the lemons that we just squeezed in here, and we're going to hide it in the bottom for now to soak so we can get the heat. And then we can go out and take it out if you want to, if you don't want any accidents of, you know, somebody not knowing what a habanero is and bites into it. So you can do that as well. Okay, so what do we have left? The cilantro nice big oh, and a nice big push of cilantro all right take that I take my herbs always take my herbs squeeze it into my hand really tightly and then chop away I'm gonna chop vertically this way and then you take your knife and you go the other way. You want to keep doing that until we get a nice and fine chop. Get them all in. All in. Down and across. That's how you will get your nice and fine chop. Keep bringing it in. Chop away. And then toss this in. Bam. Beautiful. Beautiful colors. And again, remember I said I was going to sneak in some spinach in here? I'm going to do that now. Let me show you what I have. And it's just those salad, um, pre made salad mixes that you get. This 
one for today. Last time I had some other kind, but this is the one I have today. They're called Power Grease. I did not have any ingredients in this because it's not necessary. It's just I like sneaking in greens whenever I add cilantro. It doesn't need to be a lot. It doesn't need to be a lot. You do the same technique. Let's see, can you see? There we go. Same technique. You squeeze the greens. fingers out the way. <laughs> Bringing your greens together again. Whatever herbs or spicing mint and you need a fine cut. Even when you're doing your garlic and you're doing a fine cut. Same technique. Cross. not cilantro. I mean, they won't even know it's not cilantro. They don't know. But they don't know. Won't kill them. Actually, this will make them healthier. <laughs> Sneak your greens in there. So it doesn't matter which greens you have. I mean, I think it does if you have um, the ones with um, like lettuce or very light colored greens and it won't look the same. So see, like this, it blends in and you can't even tell which one is cilantro or which one is kale or char or spinach. You can't tell. It's there. So you do want to use the ones that are, um, that are dark in color. So we want to use that. All right, there we go. Set that aside. Throw in all our greens. Not running away. And then we are ready now for our shrimp. So I will put a couple dashes of the Marie Sharp to impart that flavor. They also have the green one. I like that one too. So if you don't want to add habanero, but you do want spice, there are different levels of spices of any pepper that you have. Even if you want to add your favorite Tabasco, whatever your favorite pepper is. Like I said, I always say, this is your kitchen your flavor, your palate, how you like it. All right, and then we'll get the shrimp out, we'll get the avocado out, get the chips out, ready to get eaten. All right, so here's our shrimp. Remember, I had poached these a little bit in some boiling water, and I took it out, gave it a nice bath, soaked it in all this lime, and salt and peppered it. And now we're ready to add this to our salsa base, ceviche base dip. And then we're gonna add the avocado last, just because like I said, I don't want to um, make guacamole, right? Don't want guacamole. Let me get a spoon. A slot is gonna slot it too. We're gonna take our shrimp out and add it to this mix. don't want the um, soaked juice in our ceviche. Remember we already put um, some citrus in this. We have limes. I have some mandarin cuties from the kids. Um, lunch fruit area, throw that in there. I have some lemons that I have for my tea, throw that in there. It was just one, but it's good. Give you a different acid variety. And so we want to toss this, set this aside. There we go. Give this a toss now. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that deliciousness. And then I'm going to go ahead and find the four pieces of um, habanero we had. I'm gonna set this to the side. Well, you can let it soak. I mean, 
it just depends on your flavor profile. If you would like it to be super spicy, I will test it out <laughs> to see how spicy it is. And then if I want more spice, I will lift, leave it back in. There we go. We take that. And now we're gonna add our avocado. This is um, lime and salt and pepper so avocado. The lime is for the, we don't want our avocado to be, to get this color. No. Mm -mm -mm. Can this bowl just be for me? Can this bowl just be for me? This will be my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right, so we have that. Set this aside. And then we have our oil kind bowl. We're done with the chopping. We're done with the chopping. Chop chops. And now we'll get some chips. My bowl. So I love the blue corn chips. I just love blue corn chips. Um, not the blue corn chips. It's by late July. I just find these to be nice, crisp, not too thick. Um, we'll take this. of the menu tasting in the cooking class. This um, shrimp ceviche has always been on my menu. I love shrimp ceviche. Has always been on the menu. So we will keep this one on the menu. Um, and I hope you taste it along with me. Let me know what you think. Hi DJ, hi Sharini, thank you for joining me today. Um, DJ is a great cook. An amazing cook. I always get tips and tricks from him. And Shirini, I always watch your video. I actually watched your video this morning of the shrimp ceviche and I saw that you added cucumbers, that you like cucumbers in there. So um, you can add cucumbers in here too. I've seen people add cucumbers. Um, and that's what we have for today. So this could be a part of your I could taste the difference in the um, the orange that was in there. Delicious. And the avocado adds that creaminess to it. So this is a winner for me. I would add a little bit more salt and pepper here in the end, just to go ahead and round it out. Um, actually, that's my cooking salt. What I do like using when I have a finished product is I like using fresh cracked salt and pepper. It just gives it a different texture. Here we go. 
pepper, salt, and pepper. And there you go, guys. Who wouldn't want to be around your kale right now? Thanks for joining me with cookwithmenatalie.com. Please go to my website and sign up for your next cooking class, and I hope to be in your kitchen soon. Thank you.